Hi, I'm Denshi, and in today's video, we're going to be setting up an XMPP chat server using eJabber. Now, before we do anything with our server, we actually need to configure some subdomains to operate all the different components of our XMPP server. As you can see, I've created a few records over here. Obviously, I have my main record, which is denshi.org, that points to this dynamic DNS. Uh, then, of course, I have MUC, that will be my multi user chat domain, upload, proxy, and PubSub. I'm hosting everything on one server, so I don't have to worry about giving them different addresses or setting up a software in a weird way. In addition to this, you can also set up a turn server for calling, uh, but I've already actually made a video on that. You can go watch that. I'll have that linked in the description where I talk about how to set that up. Now, all of these are the default names. By default, it expects you to use these names, conference, upload, proxy, and pub sub. Uh, and I've used those except for the MUC or the multi-user chat. I've used MUC instead because it's shorter. And we're going to actually take a look at how we can modify that in the eJabbard settings. But now that you've set up your subdomains, we can move on to actually installing the eJabbard software. The software we're going to need today is eJabbard E. We're also going to want uh, Python 3 certbot uh, if you're using certbot. And if you're using Nginx, which is what I'm using, I'm going to add a dash Nginx right there. So we have that plugin. And you're also going to want Erlang dash p1 dash pg sql and you're also going to want the package postgresql because we're going to be using a postgresql database for our ejabbered server to make it fast now i've already installed all this software so i don't have to reinstall it but you might have to go through that process and download it might take a while because those are big pieces of software uh, but once you have installed ejabberd you will have access to stuff like the ejabberd ctl command and we're going to start working on setting up our server in the etsy ejabberd ejabberd.yml file this is the main config file used by eJabberD. So the first thing we probably want to do in here uh, is we want to make sure that our hosts are set correctly. So we said before that we're using muc.example.org, which is not the expected subdomain for multi-user chats. As you can see, the expected one is conference. So we're going to be using that one. So for that, we're going to go down to the line that says mod muc right over here. And every single module that has a domain that needs a domain in eJabberD has a host option that you can give it. And we're going to give it muc.denshi.org as our host. Now, speaking of hosts, the first thing we probably want to do is set up our main host. So up here, it says there's this host section in the config file. We're going to uncomment the host line and we're going to uncomment one of these. And we're just going to type denshi.org. Now, obviously, in your case, you can just use whatever domain you're using, but I'm using denshi.org. Now that we've done that, we probably want to delete this part that says hosts local host. So I'm just going to delete those two lines. But now that we've done that, you'll notice there's a certificates section over here where we have to give eJabberD a list of certificates for it to access. Now, because I don't want to give the eJabberD user the permissions to actually read the certificates straight from the privilege directory where they're located, instead, we're going to use a script over here to get all of our uh, subdomains automatically and copy them over to this directory, uh, which is the eJabberD search directory. So we're going to create that directory, mkdir etsy eJabberD certs just like that and now we're just going to copy paste this domain section over here our main domain is denshi.org and now we're going to copy paste this over here which is just a declaration of an array so in here you want to put all the subdomains that you want in this script it will automatically cycle through these and get the certificates using certbot which we installed before the one i'm changing is the conference one because once again we're using muc instead so now that that's done i'm going to press enter and now i can basically just copy paste uh the main part of the script and this should run automatically. Now, it does give it the Nginx flag because I am running a web server. It's asking me about a certificate which I've already installed. I'm just gonna say, keep the existing certificate. So we're just gonna let this run for a bit. It's gonna automatically get all the certificates as long as you've set the DNS correctly, that is. It's gonna copy them over to the directory and then we're gonna come back to this. All right, it's done getting all the certificates and copying them over. And now if we actually list the Etsy eJabbard search directory, there they are, a bunch of folders with our certificates. However, one thing we need to make sure is that these are owned by the eJabbered user because that's the user that's going to be running the eJabbered server software. So we're just going to copy paste this command over here, which gives it ownership over that directory. Now, all we have to do is go back to eJabbered.yml and change these lines to include all of the certificates in that directory. So 
this line over here, basically. Oh yeah, I may have accidentally given this too many tabs there. Okay, now that we've added the certificates, we can move on to the next step, which is configuring the admin user. Uh, so if we go to the ACL section, we can see that there's an admin user section, and we're gonna set the user just to any username. Uh, now in my case, I'm just gonna use the username Alex, because that's the one that I'm going to register on the server. And uh, there you go, we've created that, and it should work. Now going down here, this is the database section, where we have to start configuring the database. So if we go down down to the MAM section or message archive management. Well, first of all, we want to enable message archive management and I'm just gonna put a little two brackets over here to enable it. And as you can see, there's a comment that starts talking about how the default database system, which each average uses, which is Amnesia, is limited to two gigabytes, which means that it's not exactly useful for a proper deployment of each average. So what we're going to do is start setting up a PostgreSQL database that we will use for all of our services in eJabber. Not only the message archive, but everything else. We're gonna set it as a global database. So what we're gonna do first is we have to, you know, install PostgreSQL if you haven't installed it already. We wanna start the service if you haven't started it already. So systemctl start PostgreSQL, but I've already started it, so I don't need to start it again. And you need the module for Erlang to work with PostgreSQL. But once again, this has already been installed. I think there's a typo here. This is meant to say PGSQL. That will be fixed, sorry. Now we have to create the database. The first thing we wanna do is create a new user by using this command, using the Postgres user. And the user is gonna be called eJabberD. So we're gonna press enter and uh, yeah, it just gives an error for permissions, but we can ignore that. And we're gonna set a password here. I'm just gonna set one, two, three, four for the sake of this tutorial, but I might change that later. The next thing I'm going to do is copy paste this command. What this does is this creates a database named eJabberD and gives it to the user named eJabberD. So running this, uh, yeah, there you go, I created the database. Now, unlike most other software which I cover in my self-hosting series, eJabberd doesn't automatically fill its database with entries. You have to manually create them, which means all we have to do is download uh, this raw GitHub user content thing and pipe it into PostgreSQL. Now, you don't really have to know what this is doing, but all it really does is create all the different tables uh, that we need in a database. So going up here, though, you want to make sure your password is set correctly and the username and the database name if you set custom ones. So eJabberd over here, that's our username, and this eJabberd is the database. And of course, that's the port that PostgreSQL is set up on. So now if we press enter, this will begin creating all the tables and indexes for the database. Uh, that might take a second. Okay, there you go, it's done. Now that we've actually created the database, we can go back to uh, ejabber.yml, go to the top of the file, and, and we're just gonna leave a little space over here where we can copy paste the database configuration, which will be this stuff over here. Now username is ejabber, the database name is ejabber, and the password, once again, was one, two, three, four. So now we've created a database and let eJabberd use it. There's a few more things that we want to configure though. Like for example, we wanna go through and actually modify the different modules to enable stuff. So uh, this isn't really covered in the guide uh, because most people wanna customize this kind of stuff, but I'm gonna run you through the kind of things which I like enabling and disabling. So the first thing is I'm gonna keep all of these things enabled. Uh, however, down here, I want to enable the upload functionality for the port 5443. This allows us to upload files. If you want to enable cap you can also enable CAPTCHA. Now that we've enabled the upload though, we have to actually go to the mod. Uh, so mod underscore HTTP underscore upload, which is commented out here. We just have to uncomment all of these lines and then it will automatically just work. These are sane defaults over here. Now, one thing I'll do is I'll get rid of these little curly brackets in mod mam uh, and I will assume mam usage true and default always because I want it to automatically archive messages when people send them. Once again, for all the modules like mod HTTP upload, the stuff that you host uh, on a port, you can give it any domain name you want by using the host option. Uh, now there's probably a few more things which I probably wanna go through and modify here. Yeah, like mod register, for example, if you want to have uh, registration enabled, I'm just gonna have this with default settings with the curly brackets. But I think this is pretty much everything we need as far as I remember. Uh, most different services and stuff should be enabled by default and should begin working. Now, before we actually restart the daemon, like it says uh, in the guide, we want to go through and test it out using eJabberd CTL. So running eJabberd CTL and then live, we can press enter. It'll give us a warning, but we can press enter again and it says, oh, it's already running. Oh, sorry, it must have enabled by default. So we're gonna stop eJabberd actually first. Um, that might have happened when you install it. Now we can run eJabberd live again, and as you can see, it actually starts. 
It should automatically start all the connections on the different ports. Uh, it'll give you a warning about the turn server, but we can fix that later, actually. But now we just want to make sure that it's working. So by default, eJabbard will list it on the 5220 port. So if we go to denshi.org, colon, 52, uh, 5280, actually. As you can see, it gives us a 404 not found. There's a few different things we can access from here. One thing we can access is the admin page. So over here, we can put our username and our password uh, and log in as an admin user. But you may have remembered that while we added the admin user, we didn't give them a password. So we can do that now. And we can also disable the turn server stuff and just fine tune our server. So to exit the eJabbard live environment, you have to type Q, open bracket, close bracket, then a dot and press enter. So going back to ejabber.yml, there's a few things which I probably want to begin disabling. The first thing we want to disable uh, is MQTT, MQ which is this over here. We don't actually need this. This is kind of useless functionality if we just want to chat on our server. So I'm going to get rid of it. And also our turn server. This is useful if you're running a server um, by yourself, something that runs independently on a VPS and you just want the basic calling functionality. Uh, however, I'm going to be setting that up externally. So I'm actually going to delete this and I'm not going to have this, but do keep it and configure it if you're using a VPS or a server with a DMZ or something like that. But anyways, now that we've done that, um, we want to go through and want to actually register a user. So to do that, we actually need to start eJab first as a daemon. So systemctl restart ejabberd and then it will start ejabber. The next thing we want to do is using ejabberdctl, we're going to use the register command, then the username, the server, and then a password. So I don't know, I'm going to just put 1234, but obviously I'm going to change that later. So there you go, we've registered a user named alex at denshi.org. And now if we go back to denshi.org uh, colon 5280 and go to the admin page and we type alex at denshi.org and then put the password as 1234 as you can see it signs us into the admin interface now from here we can go to virtual hosts there's denshi.org and we can configure the users uh, we can check online users, we can go and actually change users' passwords, we can do lots of things from here. But now let's actually start using it with a client. So over here I have a client for XMPP named Dino. We're going to set up an account, we're going to type in alex at denshi.org, we're going to click next, then we're going to put a password which will be 1234 because that's the one that we set. And here we are, our very insecure password user. And we can add more users and we can start talking to people. Because XMPP is federated, we can join chat rooms from completely different servers. We can talk to users on different servers. It's a very, very nice and useful protocol. But anyways, I've been Denchi. That was how to set up your very own XMPP server with eJabbard. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Goodbye.